Hey everybody, I'm Jack Rita. I am the designer of Firefly Misbehaven. It's a deck building game, card game for two to four players. It's published by Guild Force 9 and it's available now. I'm doing a series of videos where I'm going to talk about the different playable factions in the game. There are four different factions that you can play. There's the Alliance, there's Eves Down, which is Badger's Group, there's Niska, and Serenity. And in this video, we're going to be looking at Niska's deck. So that is Niska's uh, handy-dandy uh, reference card. It's got what you do on a turn on one side, and then some stuff about verse tokens, which we'll get into in just a second. So each faction starts off with a deck of 10 cards that is unique to that faction. And you will acquire more cards either from a market, which is divided into decks of the core, the border, and the rim, or from a board of supply sets. And the cards in the market are all, for the most part, unique individual cards, and those in the supply are sets of five or six of the same card. Uh, and you'll add those into your deck throughout the game, uh, growing it, but playing cards from your deck down to your tableau on your player board, getting them out of your deck, or returning supply cards back to the supply. Um, so I'm going to look at the 10 cards uh, that they have in Niska's deck, what their abilities are, the strengths and the weaknesses, and some strategies for how to play Niska to try to win the game. So let's go through the deck. First of all, they have four characters, two items, and four assets. Uh, the first character, of course, is Niska. So as you can see, he has uh, three influence, which is a pretty high number in the game, two power, and a unique ability, which you have to spend an activation to do. So his ability is discard another card from your tableau to gain four credits. So if you've got something that you've played to your tableau, and uh, we're going to take a look at Niska's tableau here. As you can see, he's got room for five assets, uh, but there's only room for four cards in the command area. Uh, either up to three characters or up to three items or some mix, uh, but certainly no more than three. And uh, if you've got another card in there and you play Niska down and trigger him for his ability, you can discard somebody to get four credits. So getting credits is pretty good, as you'll see here in just a moment. Um, the other characters, we have Crow. So you'll recognize him. He has three power, and he's good in a fight, uh, and his ability is you can discard Crow from your hand or from your tableau and another card from your hand to cancel a deal or to gain two credits. So if you've got Crow in play, you can use him to gain money or to cancel someone else's deal. It's a nice way to meddle with the other players. Uh, we have Victor, and Victor has two power, no influence. His ability is you can discard a card from your hand, then draw a card, and then gain an activation. Uh, so basically you can play Victor down for free, use his ability to then play uh, or play another card or use that activation for some other reason. We have the Torturer, and, uh, and I'm pretty sure that was what they called him around the office. Hey, Torturer, go make some coffee and, uh, and don't torture us with it. Um, he only has one power. He's got a low defense, no influence, uh, but his ability is discard a random card from any player's hand. So that can be a little bit torturous for another player because you could do that uh, right before you pick a fight with somebody uh, it, as long as you have another activation that you can use to start that fight. All right, so they've got two items. One is the Tiffany Lamp, and that is one of Niska's fancy items uh, to display his power and uh, whatever. Uh, so this is a card that has one power. It's got one influence. This is one of his influence cards. The um, Each starting deck has roughly six influence spread out among the cards. So as you saw, Niska, two influence, uh, or sorry, three influence. That's half of your influence is just Niska. Uh, this Tiffany Lamp is another one. It has an ability that does not require an activation. Discard this card from your tableau to gain one recruitment or one activation. So if you have played the Tiffany Lamp down into the tableau, then on a subsequent turn, you could just discard it for free. And now this is a turn where you have two activations. So maybe that's when you use Victor to, uh, or I'm sorry, not Victor, but uh, the Torturer to discard a card from somebody's hand and then use your normal activation to go after and fight. 
And the other item that they have is the special machine. Uh, no power, no influence, but does have a an ability you can spend an activation, discard a character from your tableau to dispatch a character in play, then draw one card. And dispatch means that it goes into that player's recycle pile. And so in play means in their tableau or in their display area. So <clears throat> if you're in the middle of a fight and you have the ability to spend an activation, you could trigger that special machine to get rid of one of their fighters. They're dispatched, and then you can uh, hopefully win that fight. Uh, that brings us to the four assets that they've got. So the first is the Skyplex. This is where Niska hangs out. It's got a five defense, so it's, uh, it's pretty secure. Three power, so having in your tableau helps you move towards that win condition. One of the influence. It has an ability, does not require an activation. Discard a maneuver to cancel a maneuver. It is discarded without effect. So we'll talk a little bit about the maneuvers in a little bit, but those are supply cards that playing them doesn't require an activation. And uh, although in many cases, the maneuver itself requires you to have a ship in your tableau. Um, but you can have a maneuver in your hand, discard it, in order to cancel someone else using a maneuver against you. Um, Niska has two of these mercenary cards. So the, the image is different, but the cards are the same. Uh, they've got a three defense, one power, no influence, but uh, both of them have the ability for you to spend up to two credits to add plus one power to that mercenary for each credit that you spend. So that was one of the things I was talking about why it's good for Niska to have credits because you can pump up your mercenaries so that each has a power of three in a fight. And that's, that means you've got up to six power. Uh, so I'm going to point out that Niska's deck has the most fight power in it uh, when you take into account that the mercenaries can be beefed up. Um, that's because you get up to six power with them if you've, if you've spent some credits. Um, one more power with, with Torture Jones there. Uh, and then Crow, as you will recall, he's got the fight attribute and he has three power. So that's a lot of power and that's going to feed into the strategy uh, approach that I explained to you. This brings us to the last card. It's another asset and it is the writings of Shan Yu. This is a card. It's got very low defense. It does have one influence, one power. Its ability requires an activation. Reveal the top card of another player's deck add its influence to your pool. So if you see somebody else has been adding a lot of cards to their deck that have influence, and you also notice that maybe they have a number of their cards from their deck with no influence in their tableau, there's a good chance that cards in the deck, the top card there is going to have influence. It may be worth sacrificing the one influence that this card has to trigger its ability and then take a look at uh, the top card of someone's deck and maybe get a nice bonus to your influence pool that you can use in there. So those are the 10 cards in Niska's deck. And um, so let's talk a little bit about how to play this faction effectively. Uh, and before we get too much more into the cards themselves and what the strengths are, I do want to cover how Niska earns verse tokens. So this is what this card here talks about here at the very top. It shows you the conditions that you need to do in order to earn a verse token. And that's going to be a little bit different for each faction. Uh, in every case, it involves having at least one character in your tableau who is untriggered. That means that you have not turned them sideways for an ability or an effect. Uh, that is a triggered card right there. Um, so as long as they haven't been triggered or haven't been triggered yet, because you can do these abilities, uh, these actions in any order. So you say, I want to earn a verse token, and then I may use that character later in my turn, triggering it for some effect. But as long as they are untriggered. The other thing that you have to do for Niska is you have to discard one card from your hand that has exactly three power or three influence. Now, there are a few cards in the Niska deck that have that. So Niska, as you can see, he's got three influence. If we will recall... Crow has three power, so he's got three power. And the Skyplex has three power. So there are three cards that you've got in the deck 
that fulfill that requirement of having three of either the power or the influence. So let's say that you've got Victor, who is a character there with no influence. You've got him in the tableau. On your turn, you can discard a card, let's say Crow, who has also no influence, and that earns you a verse token. So this is what the verse tokens look like for Niska. They've got the little crow's crazy knife. Uh, and every faction has six verse tokens that they can earn. You start with one. Each turn, you can earn up to one more verse token using what's explained on the card. You also get verse tokens. You can get a verse token if you wish as a reward for winning a fight. And there are a couple other effects in the game that can let you get verse tokens. Um, so they're not necessarily super easy to get, but I would say that Niska's faction has the easiest time getting them because they have a number of cards that let them have exactly three power or influence. Um, the other thing that I'll point out is I've got a couple of these maneuver cards. So I've got the Crazy Ivan here, and as you can see, three power, and we've got Full Burn, also three power. Now these are maneuvers, and they both have a prerequisite here in the corner, which means that if you want to play these cards, you need to have a ship in your tableau. But you can acquire these cards and add them to your deck if you don't have a ship because you can discard them. And uh, that can be very effective for Niska's faction to earn verse tokens. And spending them is really important in the game. So let's take a look. It costs Two verse tokens for Niska's faction to gain another activation. Two verse tokens to let them re-trigger a card. What does that mean, re-trigger a card? Well, let's say that you've got the uh, special machine. Where is that? Where did I put it? Here it is. Special machine. Let's remember what that does. You trigger this card, and that will uh, let you dispatch a character in play and then draw a card. Now, once you have triggered a card, you can't use that card's ability again until your next turn. At the start of your next turn, cards reset, and they can be then used again. Uh, this one, of course, requires an activation, so if you only have the one activation, you'd have to spend it to do it. But with re-trigger, spend two verse, it lets you use this effect twice. It lets you use any of the triggered effects twice. Um, so, Writings of Shan Yu, use that twice. Niska, Discard a card from your tableau to gain four credits. You could do that twice. And eight credits, that's a pretty big deal. The other thing I can do is I can spend two to just draw a card. And then, of course, retain and replay maneuver. Those are things that all factions can do. Uh, retain means after you play cards to your display area uh, in a fight or to make a deal. Normally, those cards, and the supply cards, return to the supply. Non-supply ones get recycled. Uh, if you retain, you put one of those non-supply cards back into your hand. That's useful after after a fight uh, so that you've got cards that you can then use again on your turn. Or if you're in another fight, it's a good way to defend yourself against multiple players. And in a deal, you could then use those cards again for your activation uh, if you have another one or for your recruitment if you've still got influence. So that is handy to get. And as Niska, what you're looking for in the market and in the supply, uh, among other things, are cards that have three power or three influence. There aren't that many that have three influence, so you're mostly looking at cards with three power. Those are the best cards to get into your deck as Niska. Uh, that way you can keep earning them. And because Niska's faction can earn first tokens at a better rate than most of the other factions, you want to spend them. So you get two Spend them to get another activation, put another card down in your tableau, or pick two fights, or do something like that. To cause a lot of trouble. You've got a lot of fight. I like to, as Niska, go after cards with more fight. Uh, and that's going to be true for any faction. You want to get cards with fight. But uh, Niska's faction is armed to the teeth. They are ready to fight. And one of the things that I tend to do every turn, when I'm at the end of your turn, you're going to draw your five cards, minus however many triggered cards you leave triggered in your tableau, but typically you're going to have those five cards. First thing I look at is how much influence do I have, because I like to spend as much influence as I can on a turn to acquire a good card. But the next thing I look at when I'm playing Niska is how much fight do I have in my hand. Uh, and there's also going to be fight in your tableau. I like to put those mercenaries down into the tableau. They don't have any influence, so you get them out of the deck, 
And then you've got cards that you can bring into a fight when you need them. When I draw a hand and I say, oh, look, I've got Crow in my hand. I've got maybe the Torturer. I've got a Misbehave card that I picked up or some other cards with fight. I'm thinking maybe this is a good turn for me to pick a fight because not everybody's going to have that much fight to begin with. And especially if you've got a misbehave card or something like that, Crow's got three power, and that's a pretty big deal. Most of the other fight cards, you're talking one or two power uh, on average. So going in um, guns blazing is, is usually a pretty good approach for Niska. Uh, and you can get those mercenaries up to three power as well. So those are, those are handy to do. Nab a card from somebody, get it out of their deck, put it into your deck. Especially if they've got a card with three power or three influence. Those make great targets. Let's look at some of the other things that you can do with Niska's deck. And that is really going to be centered around trying to acquire cards that have a really good defense so that nobody wants to bother picking a fight with you. And that's going to be made easier when you have a lot of influence that you can spend or if you are making deals. Uh, deals are a really important and useful way to acquire expensive cards if you've got credits. And as you can see, Niska's got a couple of ways that he can get credits. You can get four credits using Niska. You can get two credits using Crow. Uh, so it, you've got the means to acquire the credits. You want to get them, have a nice supply that you can keep for when you need to pump up those mercenaries, but also get to a point where you can be making deals because that is really how you acquire a card like Sinon, which costs eight. Uh, that's an expensive card, but really useful, a lot of power, a really great defense at eight. It's going to be very hard for somebody to take it away from you. Uh, that's two misbehaved cards, uh, plus whatever else you're able to throw into its defense. So really think hard about that. The other thing that I like to do as Niska is I like to try to pick up a ship if I can fairly early, because while it is good to pick up these maneuver cards, it's even better if you can play them when you need them. And the maneuver cards are ex extremely powerful, especially if you've got verse tokens. And that is because each time you play a maneuver card to your tableau, which again, doesn't cost an activation, you just play it, you can do the effect. And if you've got a verse token, you can spend that to trigger the effect on the card again. And if a card has multiple effects, you can choose different effects each time you reuse that card. So full burn, for instance, uh, it lets you draw a card, uh, then discard a card from your hand, then you can either force a player to add the black to their hand, which is a garbage card that doesn't do anything except clog up their deck, or you can then draw another card. So you could do that if you if you play that once, you could use it to draw two cards, or you could use it to get a card and force someone to add the black to their hand, play a, a verse token to draw another card and add a, the black to someone's hand or even a different player's hand. Uh, and if you've got several verse tokens, you can just fire it again and again and again. Uh, and that's something that I really like to do a lot as Niska because he can get those verse tokens pretty easily. Just about every turn, you can get a verse token. If you have been adding cards to your deck with three power or three influence, it's really easy to do. And when you slim down your deck by putting cards into your tableau, you're more frequently drawing the cards that let you do that. So I like to keep Crow in the deck but with as few other cards as I can so that I'm drawing Crow every turn and I can decide, is this the turn Crow goes and picks a fight or is, do I just discard him so that I can get another verse token? So keep that in mind. That, by and large, is the approach for Niska. Uh, everyone, every faction is going to be looking to get cards that have a lot of power that they can put in their tableau, cards that have fight that they can use to defend themselves when they're going for the win. But with Niska you're looking for the sweet spot of something that has three power or three uh, influence so that you can get those verse tokens. And I like to fill up, get all six of my verse tokens, and then I got a turn where I'm going to throw those cards all down into my tableau one after the other. If you've got all six of your verse tokens, 
you could play four cards on one turn. And that is by using your normal activation, and then you can buy three more activations for two verse each. And now, if you get over, well over the required uh, amount of verse, I'm sorry, power, so you can take a look here. Let's say we're playing a four-player game. Just need to have 11 power in your tableau at the start of your turn. Well, if you're floating at around seven or eight power, and then you throw down three or four cards, each with two or three power a piece, then suddenly it doesn't matter if somebody picks a fight with you. They can't stop you from winning. Um, and if you lose a fight where the targeted card was an asset in your tableau, nobody can pick a fight with you again until your next turn is over. So you put all those cards out in your asset area, and you've got five slots for assets as Niska. And that's what you want to do. You want to put them out there and say, all right, what are you going to do? <laughs> you, can, you can win one fight. I won't even put up a fight. You can have this card. doesn't matter because when my turn comes around, I'm going to win. So that is the approach to Niska. It's a fun faction to play if you're into uh, the mean and the nasty because that's, that's what Niska is. He's a meanie and uh, he's a nasty customer. So that is uh, how to play it and I hope you enjoy and we'll... Uh, Talk to you in the next video.